Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Yesterday, we started a new subject, and that is proofs that abundance is God's will. Now, I was also using the word prosperity, but I know that there are a lot of Christians who, through wrong teaching and wrong doctrine, they think the word prosperity is a bad word. And people have heard of what some call the prosperity message, and they think it is bad. And people relate, uh, some Christians, a lot of Christians are relating the word prosperity, prosperous, riches, wealth, wealthy, with wickedness and worldliness. And so I was explaining yesterday that that is absolutely incorrect. And the Bible teaches a lot about prosperity. And yet, if you have trouble with the word prosperity or prosper or rich or wealthy, then why don't you just use some other words that mean the same thing. And that mean those are words like flourishing and thriving and being blessed and fruitful. Well, those words mean exactly the same thing as prosper and prospering. And yet, for some reason, Christians will accept those words, those latter words that I mentioned more than they would accept words like prosperity, prosper, rich, and wealthy. And so, okay, fine. If you like the word fruitful and increasing and being bountiful and flourishing and thriving, fine. It means the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. And so yesterday, introducing this is a new subject, proofs that prosperity is God's will, or you could say blessing is God's will, or fruitfulness is God's will, abundance is God's will, whatever word you prefer, it's up to you, but it's God's will. And we are now going through this lesson. We are starting this lesson as a sequel to the last study we did on healing. And in the first part of that healing study, in the first five months I gave you proofs and evidences that healing is absolutely, positively, unquestionably, undeniably God's will for everyone all the time. I gave 43 proofs and evidences, and we studied it all through Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, Scripture after Scripture after Scripture for five months, hopefully You are well satisfied. And if you didn't hear that teaching, it is available on MP3 disc for a donation of any amount. We will send you the MP3. And that is actually two discs for that series. The proofs and evidences are on two MP3 discs and then the sub uh, subsequent series why some people do not get healed, which we just finished this last Monday, is also available on two MP3 discs for the entire 11 months of programs. They are on four discs, MP3 discs, which means they don't play on a standard CD player. They will play on an MP3 disc player. They will play on the computer And so you need to be able to use them, but they are available for a donation of any amount. And you can write to me at Victoria's Faith P.O. Box 1418. That's 1418 Castle Rock, Colorado 80104. Or you can go online and donate, give a donation online. Go to my website at victoriousfaith.co. That's V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O. And go online, make a donation online. And with that, send me a message saying you are requesting these MP3 discs to get the entire series. The first half 
was five months on proofs and evidences that healing is always God's will. The second half was six months of reasons why some people do not get healed. And it was really that part was a review of the first three years of these radio programs, teaching the foundations of the kingdom of God all over again and the spiritual laws of the kingdom and how to operate in them. And those are all related to receiving your healing. And so with those two series on four discs, MP3 discs, you will get 11 months of radio programs. Now we are starting the subsequent, let me say the sequel on that study. Now looking at material financial increase. We looked at physical increase. Now we're looking at material financial increase. Yesterday we started this. And yesterday I started with actually defining to you what is prosperity. What is prosperity? And like I said, if you don't like the word prosperity, just use one of the other Bible words. They mean the same. But by definition, now, first of all, you can look up this Hebrew word in the Hebrew Strong's Concordance, the Hebrew word Salach, and it is in the Hebrew Strong's Concordance number 6743, if you want to look it up for yourself. By definition, it means to do better, to advance. Now, this is the verb prosper. We're breaking it down in verb, noun, and adjective. The verb to prosper, to do better, to advance, to increase, to break out and go over, to be at ease, to succeed in reaching. And then the noun is Prosperity, and that word means abundance, wealth, peace, quietness, and tranquility. Tranquility being the absence of storms and turmoil. The absence of storms and turmoil. And then the adjective is prosperous. Prosperous means consistently successful, consistently successful, flourishing, and thriving. Consistently successful, flourishing, and thriving. And whereas the verb to prosper means to do better, to increase, to break out and go over, to succeed in reaching, the opposite is the word Poverty, and that means to come short, to come short and to live in lack, lack, shortness. And then I gave you another Hebrew word to define prosperity, and it's the Hebrew word shalom, shalom, and most Christians have heard the word shalom defined in English as peace, peace. However, that is an incomplete definition. The word shalom in a better, com more complete definition is defined as wholeness, W-H-O-L-E, wholeness. And yesterday I gave you an illustration of what the word shalom means, wholeness. And I described it as a pie and you cut the pie into nine slices because our lives can be divided into nine areas, nine areas of our lives. There is your spirit and your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, and your body, that's three areas. Then there is your finances, number four, and number five is your family, that would be your marriage and your children. Your marriage and your children, your family, that would include your parents and brothers and sisters. 
And then there are all other relationships, all other relationships. Then there is your work, your work, and then your protection, your work and your protection, and then your future, your future. And so these are nine areas of your life. And so every slice in that pie, you cut the pie in nine slices. One slice represents your spirit, another your soul, another your body, another your finances, another is your family, another are your relationships, another is your job or your work. Another is your protection from harm and danger, including violence or accidents. And another is your future. Now, then wholeness is having your spirit prosperous and prosperous spirit is being born again. A poor spirit is being a lost sinner without God. A poor spirit is being a lost sinner without God. A prosperous spirit is being born again and growing spiritually. Then your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, a poor spirit. I mean, a poor soul, soul, particularly your mind and emotions would be the mind and emotions that are in turmoil, where there are mental and emotional problems, stress, worries, anxieties, and fears, depression, or even things such, such as, you know, dual personality, anything like that. Any mental or emotional problem is poverty in your soul. A prosperous soul is really being whole, peaceful. At uh, This is quietness, calmness, and tranquility in your mind with joy, with joy, peace and joy. And that's a prosperous soul. Then the body, of course, is your physical body. A poor body is a body that has weakness, sickness, disease, or pain. Weakness, sickness, disease, or pain. That's a poor body. A prosperous body is a healthy body, a strong and energetic, thriving body. And then there is your finances. So then poor finances means to come short and live in lack financially and materially of your needs. And so prosperous financially means to advance, increase, break out, go over, be at ease and be successful to also have abundance and wealth and peace, quietness and tranquility, tranquility being the absence of storm and turmoil. In your finances. And so it does. And let me mention this. Prosperity is relative. Prosperity to someone in Africa will be different than prosperity to someone in America because of different economies. Also within America, even the prosperity to one person, they can live in contentment, having their needs met and desires on a lower level scale than others. And so, you know, so it is relative, but it means to be having, uh, to be at ease, to be successful and to be tranquil without storm or turmoil and to not come short or live in lack, but to have abundant supply of all your needs. And then there is your family, your marriage, and children and grandchildren, your parents, siblings, and that to be a prosperous family or relationship with your spouse, your children, your parents means to be in peace and harmony, unity, love with your family members. Broken relationships, broken, divided relationships is poverty in the family. And it's the same with other relationships. Having broken relationships is poverty. Having whole, healthy, happy, joyful, loving relationships is 
prosperity or being prosperous in relationships. Your job the, or the work of your hands, some people call it w- job, some people call it ministry, but it's the work of your hands. Whether you have your own business or you work for someone else, but it means to increase, to advance, to do better, to be successful, to be thriving and flourishing in your work. And that's your work area. Then for your protection, it is being protected by the power of God's word and the blood of Jesus that you are protected from harm and danger in this world where there is danger and protection is an area of prosperity. And then finally your future. If you are anxious, worried, troubled about your future, you are not prosperous in your view of your future. If you feel like you might have a dark future or you're troubled about your future, it is not a prosperous future. But the person who has hope, now hope means expectation for good or of good, expectation of good, to expect good things. That is hope. When you have hope, you expect good. To have fear is or or worry is to expect bad. If you're fearful, worried, or anxious about the future, you are expecting bad. But if you have hope, you expect good things in your future. And for the Christian, our future is bright. The path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter to the noonday sun. But the path of the wicked gets darker. But if you look at your future and think it's dark and gloomy or you're fearful about it, then you are not having a view of a prosperous future. But if you have expectation for good, then you have a view of a bright future. Now, those are the nine areas of your life. Everybody has those nine areas of life. And to have all of those Nine areas intact, well, and some translations, the well-being of those nine areas. That is shalom, wholeness, W-H-O-L-E, wholeness. So that, and that word shalom in the Bible, it's a Hebrew word. It is often translated prosperity. But it is also sometimes translated peace, quietness, but it means wholeness in every area of your life. So even if you do have a lot of money, if you do not have a healthy body, you are not prosperous. You can have a lot of money, but not be prosperous if you have a sick body. If your body is racked with pain, you are not prosperous because you don't have shalom. You do not have wholeness in every area of your life. If you could have a lot of money, but if you don't have a good marriage and good family, you are not prosperous. So money alone is not what makes a person prosperous. What makes a person prosperous is being whole. W-H-O-L-E, in every area of life, which includes finances. So you could have good health and a good marriage, but if you're broke, you have no money, you can't pay your bills, you're struggling, then you're not prosperous either. So it does include financial and material provision, finances, but that's one of the nine areas. You need to learn to look at prosperity as all nine areas of your life being whole. Because like I said, you're not prosperous if you have money, but you're sick. Also, you're not prosperous if you're healthy, but you have no money. Vice versa. You're not prosperous if you have money, but a broken marriage. 
nor are you prosperous if you have a healthy marriage, but no money. It's all of it. Neither are you prosperous if you have money, but you are full of cares, worries, anxieties. If you're depressed, if you're on, you know, antidepressant medication, you are not prosperous. You are prosperous when you have all nine areas of your life whole. That is prosperity. That's the biblical definition of prosperity to be whole in all nine areas of your life. Now, in the last series, we focused on healing, which is prosperity in the body, health, strength, and energy in your body, your body free from pain, sickness, disease, and weakness. That's prosperity in your body. Now, as we go in this study, we are now going to be focusing and looking at wholeness, prosperity in the area of your finances. That's what the rest of this series is going to be about. But you need to know, first of all, that prosperity in your finances alone is not biblical prosperity. But it is part of biblical prosperity. So that's where we laid the foundation yesterday and today to define for you clearly what is true biblical prosperity, wholeness in all nine areas of your life. But we do study them one by one, just like we studied healing. Now we are going to look at finances because finances are are a major part of your life. Just try to have no money and see how you get along in life. Not very well with no money. Money is an integral part of your life. And what is God's will for you in your money? Well, it is prosperity. It is to increase, to do better, to advance, to increase to break out and go over, to be at ease financially. That means there's no pressure on your finances and to succeed in reaching. And then yesterday, I also gave you proof number one, as I am now going to present to you proof after proof after proof after proof through the Bible based on scripture, proofs that prosperity is God's will. And I gave you yesterday proof number one, and that was how many times God talks about it in the Bible. And I showed you that God actually uses many different words in the Bible to define prosperity and that relate to prosperity. And that's why I said, if you don't like the word prosperity, we'll choose a different word, flourishing thriving, fruitful. Those are all Bible words and they mean the same. They mean to increase. Hallelujah. So also yesterday, after I finished the program, I wanted to check my numbers that I gave you. And because I gave you the number of times that certain words are used in the Bible such as the word prosper, prosperity, prosperous, abound, abundance, wealth, wealthy, rich, riches, bless, blessing, and blessings, increase, fruitful, bounty, bountifully, overflow, overflowing, plenty, and flourish, and flourishing. And I gave you a total of those words. Afterward, I wanted to check my numbers after I finished the program And I realized that when I sat down to get those numbers, I did it in two different sittings. And in two different sittings, I forgot which translation I used. In one of those sittings, I used the King James Version. And in the other sitting, I used the NIV, the New International Version. So the numbers I gave you yesterday, half of those numbers were the King James Version numbers. And half of those numbers were the NIV, the New International Version numbers. And so... It That wasn't all from the same translation, and I wanted to clarify that. So I actually went back and recounted those numbers 
to be consistent in the King James Version and in the NIV. And I also found some more words. And this, these words are my own brainstorm of words that I see in the Bible that relate to prosperity. And I found some more. I found words I added in just not, not only increase, but also the word increasing, not only the word fruitful, but the word fruitfulness and not only bountiful, but also bountifulness. So those are more words that are used. Also, not only, um, uh, flourishing, I found the King James uses this word, fatness. Now, we don't use that, but you'll remember hearing that, that God will make you fat or make fat your bones. See, that is King James language that is not used in the modern language translations. And that is fatness and making fat your bones to be made fat. Also, I looked up words such as um, success and successful, since they're part of the definition of prospering, and words such as thrive and thriving. And the King James uses another one, waxed great. Well, we don't use that in modern English, waxed great. It's translated as riches. So our total now is a little different than it was, but it is still showing you the abundance of these used words used. Now, I'm going to have to pick this up tomorrow. I'm out of time. Join me tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.